The Attack of Titan Basement Reveal. Already seen fans mixed on this. So what's up guys, Fox near. Attack of Titan Season 3 Part 2 Episode 7. I really wanted to get an in-depth manga versus anime comparison out. So definitely give a close thumbs up and subscribe, especially if you want this done for the last 3 episodes. So let's get started. This episode starts with a shot of Mikasa from Armin's point of view. You gotta reaching out to grab Armin right as a Colossus Titan nuke is going on. The anime now makes the scene make complete sense, since previously the manga version almost made it seem like Mikasa was pulling or grabbing Armin after he became a Titan shifter. This anime point of view now confirms Armin did in fact suffer from some Titan memory loss, although nothing compared to like something like Eren or Grisha suffered, especially Papa Grisha. Armin, in comparison, simply forgot the entire takedown plan for the Colossal Titan and actually doing it. Just think back to Papa Grisha, he completely forgot about his past life, although that slowly returned. Keep in mind the key difference between Eren, Grisha, and Armin going into Titan mode was the injection, and I guess also their Titan. It is possible that the race family had this Titan cocktail down to 99% pure, resulting in the least amount of memory loss. Grisha wasn't so fortunate to get some of the better Titan stash. Next up, that Titan dream state where you had the Colossal Titan being sad about how it hurts. Seems the Titan mystery has been confirmed. Who exactly was this thing? Well, it did in fact sound like a depressed Bert. The actual episode credits do in fact list Bertone as being present in this episode, so that pretty much narrows it down. This Colossal Titan head is really the only spot where Bert could pop up. And could you imagine, how eerie would it be if all past Titan shifters have a chance to look back at the new user, maybe even constantly. Imagine how Grisha felt overseeing young Eren. By the way, a slight change here with the anime never having the big guy's eye closed. Then for Armin waking up, is it just me or did Armin have more sculpted abs in the manga? Either way, this whole scene in the anime now confirmed that it wasn't Armin just seeing this on the bright wall top. Again, really just going back to the shadow mental titan area. Anyway, back on the wall top, still keeping with the updated wall design, which is much thicker with more detailed column separators. Gotta make sure Colossal Titans can actually fit in there. For Potato Girl Sasha, she definitely looked a lot more banged up and bloody in the manga. And yes, throughout this episode, you'll notice quite the animation drops. I have seen several discussions on Japanese Twitter about how this episode was mostly outsourced. And honestly, it's not too difficult to tell. On the other hand, for Sasha, the anime actually shows you this more severe bloody wrappings for poor Sasha. Anyway, for Levon coming in, getting the good old switcheroo with Eren and Armin. Perhaps it was just anime Eren moving back on instinct. Definitely another rough shot of these two buddies too. Right here, there was a slight dialogue change from manga to anime. Manga Armin simply told Levi he didn't recall anything that just had happened, period. In comparison, anime Armin claimed he had a fuzzy memory, but did claim to recall the Colossal Titan transformation, which would be in line with Mikasa reaching out in that shot. You then have the new line from Armin being worried about the other scouts. Anime Levi now continues this trend, with his claim of that being how far Armin was able to recall. So overall, the anime now clarifies the whole Armin Titan memory loss in much more detail, instead of leaving it more vague like the manga counterpart. Next up, the scout location setup. The manga really only had a single panel of Mr. Horse and Kony seeing it from afar. The anime now has a welcome close-up shot of Horse Muscles, Mikasa, and your favorite Redhead. Then the wide shot overseeing the wall top plus scouts. Of course, more detail overall. Questionable stuff with the characters. Notice now the anime decreased the leftover thunder spears that these guys had, down from maybe 30 to around 10 or so. Throughout this whole scene, you definitely notice how Armin has been missing that shirt of his. So, so far you got to see Eren and Armin's abs, but still a no-go for Levi abs. I've actually seen several questions regarding this, the Armin part. Recall that going into Titan mode does randomly make you lose equipment or clothing. Even before this whole fight, Eren ended up losing his scout cloak after going Titan mode. For Armin, his shirt and jacket got absorbed into the Malice Titan. Because of course, you gotta keep the pants or something to cover the below part. And in case anyone is wondering about the scout jacket, I'm pretty sure that Eren lent Armin the jacket just to cover up. Next up is actually a great example of the anime elevating this shot by simply adding a background, compared to it being bright white. Even in the following shot, you have the anime adding Flog being Telescope Boy in the back, plus some scout equipment. Nice touches like this do seem small, but they do bring more life into the scene. So getting into Armin's realization that the commander is now gone, the anime added a new shot of Armin squeezing his water sack. Really a great way to display his frustration. Also, just to show some juice is still left in there. For Hanji over here, some new dialogue added for her. The anime now has Hanji expressing how much of a shame it was that everyone was put into this sticky situation of having to decide who lives and who dies. Originally, this was a quiet, wordless moment for Hanji in the manga. And next up, you have some dialogue cut for Hanji. When Hanji's talking to Armin about how he now has to bear the legacy of Erwin's life and the Colossal Titan power, the manga had a little bit more from Hanji, 
She told him that humanity as a whole would be expecting a lot more from Armin due to this. It really seems like the anime made Hanji seem a lot more sincere in this moment, especially considering how much Armin had to take in at this point. This right here shows the more developed Hanji too, much less crazy compared to season 1 Hanji. Oh, but don't let this distract you from anime Hanji gaining that incredibly sharp nose. That could slice up a titan. Next up, that completely new anime scene, the basement shot. You got a voiceover here from Papa Grisha telling Eren how he will show Eren the basement after doing his doctor business. This is followed by a scene of younger Eren looking down with the short hair Carla. Originally, I first thought this was anime original, but technically it's not. The anime showed this shot later when they were trying to move the boulder over the basement opening. This whole scene really just doubled down why Carla and Eren stayed out of that super important basement. I always did wonder how much Carla knew, or if she ever suspected anything. But from everything you know so far, Carla died without knowing anything. So hey, a parallel with Erwin's recent death. Next up, another anime original shot of the scouts flying down. You really have to not think about how the hell they would survive the descent. Even Captain America would go splatter. This is followed by some actual anime recap from episode 1. You have the Colossal Titan smashing the wall. You could then hear Erwin talking about the base most important to humanity. About 30 seconds here of recap. And to be honest, I don't mind this stuff, since I was pretty aware that they would be adapting only one anime chapter this episode. Next up, another anime news scene. You got this heroic looking Armin next to his best ginger buddy. Small glimpse of the Potato Girl squad too. Anyway, getting to Levi and friends on the ground. Everything from the scene of them taking off the wall until they reach their past home is completely new for the Attack on Titan anime. I'm actually really glad the anime added more connected tissue. At times, the manga almost felt like some Game of Thrones Season 8 stuff being highlights. I especially love the small details like that burnt up leftover bear, that busted up sign from Wall Maria, that being the updated design from the Season 1 opening too. The best part here was briefly seeing young Eren and Mikasa running down these streets. This whole marketplace and town was super lively once upon a time. That season 1 music choice here in the background definitely hammered down that nostalgic feeling even more. There's a good chance most of the people here either passed from the initial warrior attack or following the chaos after their lovely government forced thousands of people outside of Wall Rose. Recall that? There's even a shot of a flower, Attack on Titan definitely loves to be eco-friendly, but really in its own way showing that there's still some form of life still remaining. There's even this Levi reflection shot on some broken windows. I'm definitely a sucker for some glass or water animation done like this. Then you got this amazing attention to detail. You got Eren and friends getting to this area. You should recognize this. This was that location where Eren and Reiner round 2 took place. Notably the peak is broken off here. If you look back at the Titan toss-up, you could actually notice the exact moment where the armored Titan stick ass broke the tip of this exact pillar. For the Uncle Hannes callback, they were also consistent with Hannes' buddies from the first Attack on Titan episode. The only curious part is that you have Eren recalling Hannes as his buddies with the 3D maneuver gear equipped. That was not the case back in the first episode. But hold up, Hannes and friends were actually fully equipped in the manga version, Attack on Titan Chapter 1. So throughout this, I've got to actually use some less Season 1 scenes and more original Season 3 stuff, but I still enjoyed the literal walk down memory lane. Eren and Mikasa slowly walking to their home really helped to cement the weight and impact for them especially, back to their home 5 years later after the Warrior Titan attack. An interesting shot that followed was the white birds and green scenery on the boulder. Two white birds, the white meant to represent life. So perhaps a parallel for Grisha and Carla looking over this spot, or really just for Eren and Mikasa coming back. Next up, that old moldy shoe. Notably very green and more flowers in the shot. I've actually seen some confusion about this. Some people think that Mikasa lost her shoe in episode 1. I actually had to double check the Attack of Titan episode 1 and chapter 1. There, Mikasa never actually loses anything. Although, Mikasa is seen losing a different style shoe in the Attack of Titan season 3 opening. That was most likely referencing this very shoe. Anyway, some more anime-only stuff. Mikasa and Eren scavenging some silverware. It does feel a little bit randomly added. But to be fair, this stuff does hold past memories for them. Especially if they ever help Mama Carla clean up. Next up, surprisingly something cut out. Which would have been the whole episode 1 scene of Carla and Grisha finding out about Eren wanting to go outside. Grisha asking why Eren wanted to go beyond the wall. And then Eren proclaiming that he wanted to know what was on the outside. It feels like the axis from the anime just to keep the basement scene mostly quiet until Eren realizes key didn't fit inside the hole. For the actual basement key, still in line with that upgraded anime design. You've definitely seen this key being sewed, especially for things like Attack on Titan keychains. And for the lock, now a little bit bulkier. Getting into the basement, I love that transition with the ignited flames. It really reminds me of Erwin doing something similar while being locked up. In the actual basement, the anime kept the small details intact, even giving you that close-up shot of the books and supposed medicine. 
I did notice the remove bottle of liquor below Grisha's desk. <laughs> the enemy now gave some new dialogue to Hanji. She noted how this dump looked like a lab. Erin added and made it clear that Papa Grisha was always mixing some batches of medicine down here. Right, medicine. Keep in mind Grisha did have to develop some titan juice at some point. As for Levi bringing up the interior military police here, this really might have shown how lazy those guys were, or just have gotten over the past years. Oh, and nothing looks suspicious? Back to playing cards and drinking. Or in Kenny's case, building some followers and looking for that titan power. Next up, that new Mikasa scene. The anime now has her dropping that cup, which helped her find the actual key slot. The more important shot here being a young Mikasa and Papa Grisha moment, plus a smile from present day Mikasa. Aw, oh, the sweet memories. I really wish Attack on Titan could somehow add more to this. Some of the stuff we saw in Mikasa Lost Girl Story OVA was a nice touch. I really wouldn't mind seeing another OVA special with them just living this normal day inside of the walls before the attack. Just bundle it with some Attack on Titan volume. Anyway, back to the walled off home, time to celebrate. The anime notably added a still shot of the reporter guys. The kids in the back also have some Wings of Freedom flags. I definitely need one of those. On the wall top, you can see some people helping out Sasha. This included some white haired individual for the anime. Oh my god, Rico is back. It's one of those blink and you'll miss it cameos. For the guys on the top here, I guess someone let Eren borrow one of the Survey Corps capes just so they could pose to the crowd. Notably, you can see them tightly holding the three books. Anyway, back to the basement scene. You got Eren and friends discovering that photo. And it's funny because I have seen some confusion over this too. People asking why Grisha would have to clarify this being a photograph. That technology doesn't exist at this point. That was supposed to be one of the major takeaways of this scene. Anyway, look at the family photos side by side. Pretty accurately done. Oh, too bad there's no color. Damn these dark ages. Newly added for the anime was a close-up shot of the picture. So I think this pretty much gives it away if it hadn't already. You can see a young Grisha plus two mystery extras. Over this, you could hear that line from Grisha about hopefully a fellow patriot finding this treasure. Humanity has not perished. And this right here is when Attack on Titan changed forever for anime-only people. Next up, getting into the juicy Grisha flashback post credit scene. I'm so super surprised they included this. This is actually the start of the next chapter, chapter 86. And I could really see them starting the next episode with this scene. This whole ending scene was actually outsourced and done by this anime studio called DR Shitagio. And it's honestly some of the better stuff seen this episode. Of course, the major thing you'll notice right away is the armband. At first glance, it looks like they changed it a little bit. Now it's more brownish and the colors are toned down. Gabby has been seen wearing one of these in the covers. There, this thing was bright yellow. To be honest, I really can't blame them for toning this down, especially if they don't want the Attack on Titan conversation to be taken over by some fake controversy. Reminds me a bit of the stuff ReZero cut out for the anime. For Little Faye and Young Grisha, the anime definitely didn't put much detail on the background characters, although you can still see the armbands. Slight change with Faye's clothing too. And oh my god, did they make Faye extremely adorable. The anime now has some new shots, including a spot where you can see the homes clearly marked with some sort of symbol. All throughout this, a new voiceover by Grisha. I'm definitely expecting and welcoming some more of this stuff for the next three episodes. For the actual blimp above, looks like this thing got changed with an updated design for the anime. They must be going for this more realistic look. It resembles a Graf Zeppelin used in the 1920s in Germany. Next up, I do have to mention this guy. Been getting questions about him. So let me confirm, this guy is in fact Tom. The character was actually confirmed in the episode credits. Him being here actually brings up some possible questions and maybe even some answers. In all, this is really the beginning, at least for Grisha's story. The day that kickstarted everything for his side of things. So, let me know, did you enjoy the anime version of this? Are you liking the new anime original content, or is it just filler? Keep in mind, this will be a very similar pace for the last three episodes. Anyway, go ahead and give a colossal thumbs up, check out my episode review and my in-depth video on the Colossal Titan. And I'll see you guys later.